Here in the Philippines, PPVs or pickup platform vehicles sell like hotcakes, and it's not hard to figure out why. You get room for seven, high ground clearance, and more often than not, a diesel engine, which is really what most of us want. But what if I told you that you could get something better for the same money? Presenting the Kia Sorento EX all-wheel drive. This is named after a small village in Italy, so maybe we should call it the Sorrento. But anyway, the Sorrento has been around since 2002, and it actually started life as a body-on-frame SUV. That is before the second generation came out in 2009 with a monocoque or unibody. This is the third generation model, which also has a unibody, and that's really what sets this apart from PPVs. And we'll talk about the inherent benefits of that during the drive, but for now, let's talk exterior. Believe it or not, this shares the same platform with the Kia Carnival, so it's longer but lower than the second generation model. Now, this may not seem as rugged or as brute as the PPV, but personally, I like its clean look. And that clean look is also functional because this has a drag coefficient of 0.33, and less air resistance means better fuel economy. At the front, you get LED headlights and DRLs, projector type fog lamps, a skid plate, and of course, Kia's signature Tiger Nose Grill. Now, in case you're wondering what makes a Tiger Nose Grill, it's the indents found here and here. And that makes the middle of the grill seem narrower. And that also draws your attention to this. What's neat is that those indents can also be found on the top of the windshield. Along the side, there's a conservative use of black body cladding. You also get a relatively high belt line and a sleek greenhouse, which makes the Sorento look a bit longer. The Sorento rolls on 18-inch wheels, which look rather small due to the large wheel well. You also get power folding side mirrors with repeaters. At the back, you get LED taillights and a power tailgate that can be operated hands-free. This reveals 320 liters with the third row seats up. Folding them gives you 1,077 liters of space, and you can even fold the second row seats to give you 2,066 liters of space and a flat floor. Not bad. Oh, and another thing I like is how this button is illuminated. Now let's go check out the rest of the interior. This is a no-frills interior, and I don't mean that in a bad way because this has you covered with everything you could possibly need. And by no means is it dull or mundane. In fact, I really appreciate how everything looks and the fact that the storage area and these cup holders can be concealed. That'll really help to keep it clean aside from making it look tidy. Most of what you'll see here leans more towards functionality over flamboyance. For instance, this instrument cluster is mostly analog except for the small multi-information center you get in the middle. Personally, I don't mind that because aside from being clear and legible, you know it'll age well. And I also really like the fact that you get physical knobs and buttons for your audio and climate controls. This has a fully automatic dual zone AC system, while the third row passengers get separate temperature and fan speed adjustments. The infotainment system here is relatively small by today's standards, but at least it comes standard with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And I know most people will prefer that over a slightly bigger screen. You can also use this to tweak various car settings, and it also has a built-in reverse camera. Overall, this isn't exactly what you'd call a fancy interior, but nothing here feels cheap or low rent. In fact, most of the materials are nice and soft to the touch. The leather seats are also extremely comfortable and it provides a decent amount of bolstering and under thigh support. Only the driver's seat is power adjustable, but at least you get lumbar support. You also get a tilt and telescopic steering wheel, so finding your ideal driving position is a breeze. But being an SUV, it can't be all about the driver, so you'll be happy to know that even the rear passengers get decent levels of space and comfort. There's more than enough head and legroom for the second row occupants. 
Plus, the seats can be moved forwards and backwards and also recline quite a fair bit. The absence of a center tunnel means whoever's sitting in the middle won't feel like they got the short end of the stick, and neither will the folks sitting in the third row. Granted, they will sit rather low, but you don't have to be a contortionist to sit comfortably back there. It's also nice to see rear air vents, charge ports, an armrest with cup holders, and a pass-through for storing longer objects. So, so far, you might be thinking, okay, there really isn't much that sets this apart from a typical PPV. But that's only because we haven't driven it yet. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Like I said earlier, this is a unibody. So generally speaking, the ride is more refined compared to a PPV. This is a lot lighter than a body on frame setup, which translates to better handling, better ride comfort, and better fuel efficiency. The ride is very comfortable. The suspension is extremely compliant. Now there is a bit of body roll, but you can still tackle corners without feeling edgy. Then we get to the steering, and it's really nicely weighted. The thing is, you can also vary its feel through the car settings. But it does firm up as you get faster, so that's a good thing. Now, the steering ratio isn't the quickest or more, most responsive thing out there, but at least it doesn't make the car feel any bigger than it actually is. And for me, that's very important, as it takes a lot of the fatigue out of driving. Now, under the hood lies a 2.2-liter CRDI engine, and despite its relatively small displacement, it still manages to pump out 197 horsepower and 441 newton meters of torque. Now, there may be some PPVs that have slightly higher power output figures, but let's not forget that this is 300 kilograms lighter than your average PPV. So, I highly doubt that you'll be left wanting when it comes to this thing's acceleration and overall response. This comes with an 8-speed automatic transmission, and the fact that you get peak torque low down in the rev range means there's less gear hunting. But in any case, there are various drive modes, which varies shift mapping depending on your desired driving style. The Kia Sorento provides an extremely pleasant driving experience. You could spend hours in this on a daily basis, and it'll never feel taxing. And that's not something you can say about all PPVs. The Kia Sorento EX can be yours for 2,195,000 pesos, which places it in the same price range as some of the top-of-the-line PPVs. And that goes to show that you really can have something better for the same money. So you really have to ask yourself if there's anything in a PPV that you actually need. Because once you experience this, you might come to realize that this is exactly what you want. 